because I don't, I don't look at the films that I'm, when I'm in the middle of making a film, I'm rarely looking at it in a very broad objective, from a very broad objective perspective. Um, and we're doing this interview right in the middle of making the film. Uh, and therefore my perspective is the most subjective and uh, I tend to look at a, the film from a broader sense uh, when I first read it and when I'm first thinking about it and when I'm first trying to decipher the tone of the film or trying to get a sense for um, just at its core the story and, and then as I start to think about working on the film, I want to get more a sense of the tone and the and the atmosphere of the film, and and those are more objective viewpoints. But then the 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 deeper and deeper I find myself, the more subjective I become, and and eventually I find myself at the point that I'm at now, which is simply um, how to get from here or right over to there and what's happening between here and there and that's it and it's as small as that and, and, and of course you have a sense of intention and have a sense of, of, of a journey and, 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 and where this little space of time or fits within that journey but it, it it's so subjective I don't I, I can't think I don't think in terms of metaphors or or themes, or uh, I'm really thinking more in terms of uh, uh, is if I'm throwing something in the wastebasket, why I'm throwing it in the wastebasket, or if I'm looking at the woman across the desk from me, um, what I'm thinking about when I'm looking at her, <laughs> which is generally what I'm thinking about. <laughs> well, he's just lost uh, uh, his a secretary who, uh, an employee of his, <laughs> and he's, um, I think he's, uh, uh, with the emphasis on the word loss, I think there is a, um, I know when I, when we, sh we shot that scene where you first meet him, and I know I felt um, uh, quite adrift. <laughs> Um, and hoping that someone would throw out their hand and pull me in. Uh, but by the same token, I, I don't think he ever is able to separate his enormous appetite and uh, he is a ravenous hunger and that uh, I think that he's constantly in conflict with and uh, um, it most often gets the best of him. And I think that's what... Uh, and he has strange things that, that take his interest. Uh, it manifests in so overtly within every aspect of his life he's incorporated his desire and his uh, his desires are so assimilated in every aspect of his life that it's so overt to him that he's reminded of his desires and constantly reminding him of his desires at every turn wherever he looks wherever he Wherever his eyes are arrest, whatever he touches, whatever he smells, is all about that. And because of that, I think he's horrified as well. <laughs> and I think that drives him. That, uh, I don't know actually whether it's horror so much as he's... Um, he's, in, he's extremely conflicted. <laughs> Yes, I think there is. I think there's, they see reflections of themselves 
in the other person. And sometimes that's enormously compelling and, uh, and exhilarating and arousing and uh,